why everyone is in the other side. Probably they want to see better the, the, the landscape. But anyway, always a pleasure to be invited after lunch, you know, when people are mostly concentrated or not. But anyway, they are, they are there and sitting there. So it's great to be here. I really would like to say thank you to the organization because we have been really well considered to, to come here. Although we are working with communities, Latino communities here in the in, in United States, we come from, from Latin America. Basically, myself, I'm coming from Cordoba, Argentina. That's in the very stream of the south, but I'm based basically in Bogota. Bogota, you may know, is the capital city of Colombia. And we began working there like in 2010 when we began to use the OpenStreetMap platform. Uh, what that has this to do with dancing the most street style? Uh, well, I don't know if you have heard, any one of you have heard about the most mosh pit dance or gathering, never? Maybe the older ones <laughs> going to heavy metal concerts and so on? Yeah, people get <laughs> to the mosh pit in the, in the stadiums and, and they, they jump and they, they, they begin to clash one each other. But basically, it's about bringing ideas in, in this kind of setting, considering that there are other trends that use it more civilized way, in a more civilized way, this mosh pit style, and they do bring ideas into the mosh pit, and they take other ideas. That's the idea. And it, generally speaking, it's uh, an idea of gathering together, you know? And we firmly be believe in our community, in your sense of community, that we can also sit together with governments and private sector. I mean, it's a long time ago when, you know, civil sector was so critical about you know, all these big firms like Google, Facebook, so on. But nowadays, it's much more easier to work together because they understand better the situation. So that's the, the thing about the mosh pit uh, idea. And uh, we started thinking about a certain idea to collaborate, not only in the community, but also with governments and private sector, and thinking about this mosh pit thing that was happening in an open data conference to take it to national statistical offices. Right here, you do have the Census Bureau, but we have, for instance, in Colombia, the DANE, that's the National Statistic Office, but also we do have StatCan in Canada that is running pilots in Ottawa. We will see that case further. Um, if I have your interest, then I would like to show you a little bit about our story before we get inside the mosh pit, and I show you a couple of examples on our own stats up project. Basically, we are a registered foundation in, in Latin America. We are based in Colombia, but also have communities in Chile and Guatemala. We do train grassroots organizations and, and people that are working on geostatistics. We do support people from low income classes, mostly from university level that, that, that are interested to, to get some kind of support and to get into the mapping activities there. And we do advise national statistics offices. I must say that technical skills at national statistics offices are quite difficult to find and mostly to understand what we do. But I think we have been striving about around that. And we will do better when the census rounds come on 2020 because so many cartographic census data are needed so that people are sent to the field. Um, uh, this is something that it will evolve as well and probably will have armchair census data, but this will be the future. I don't think it will have too much time uh, until that comes, but anyway. And we also had hacking activities and stuff, um, opening data for portals and so on. Uh, we, we do also have this idea of working with government, trying to elicit data from civil society, but also from other groups. And uh, we have also trained people with the OpenStreetMap platform in many places. Uh, I mentioned here Panama as a hub for the rest of the Latin American region because right there is based what they call the UNFPA fund for Latin America, and it's mostly focused for population. That's the name is United Nations Population Fund. 
and also to some issues related to reproductive rights and, and women in, in uh, let's say, from 12 to 15 years old. Um, anyone of you have heard about data revolution here? No? Yeah. Not even the olders? <laughs> <laughs> data revolution is something that has been summoned by the United Nations, uh, United Nations General Agreement. If Michael Mar Michael Maron is right here, he may tell you more about that because he's an expert on that on that ground. But basically, it's a uh, general agreement that the United Nations has arrived to produce data about a certain characteristic of the Sustainable Development Goals. These are goals that. Generally speaking, the world is looking forward and will try to attain between the 2020 and 2030. This is called the 2030 Agenda, which is general goals for many issues. It's 17 goals. You may imagine there are all kinds of goals. What we did about this is to approach the Startup Project. This is running startups within the national statistic offices and trying to support the guys that are there trying to build new ideas. It's really hard to open the data, but it's also harder to explain an officer from a government, how do you do that? I mean, open data is something we all may be familiar with, but not many governments are really there, you know? Mostly in Central America, that's our regional influence, but also in South America, you may not find that much interest within the official statement, and why? because they feel so powerful with the data, they won't want to open them at all. Uh, that's what would be one of the insights. But anyway, uh, how do, do we measure this? I mean, applying the lean method and somehow trying to learn here, how did we measure our action, our impact? Well, we have done in seven countries some activities and funded communities there trying to evangelize about the use of OpenStream and other open data tools. Also, we ran hackathons. We were summoned in 2013 by NASA for the Space Apps Challenge, and we dealt with almost like five uh, local chapters of the NASA Space Apps Challenge. That was really important for us, and we learned a lot about mostly weather mapping and stuff like that, and we began to evolve into the statistic mapping environment. And finally, with, with all that, we supported the 69 mapping project that are mostly related to statistics in the, on the field, basically. So how do we do this collaboration? Because we spoke about collaboration in, uh, at the menu, but didn't specifically spoke about how it's done this, how this is done. So basically, it's about discovering first the data. This could be asked for from a national statistic office, but also you can find your own data and try to face it and confront it with real other data. Also, it's really important to validate because usually the officers at the government would like to have a certain, you know, standardization, but also certain characteristic of the data and so on. So this is really important in the in the whole process. And finally, the uploading that could be circular related to the discovery. So this is basically how how we work, and we try to fund it or to to base it. On, on basically this circle of trust, like asking governments some data that maybe are not open. They usually say they have open data, but it's not really the case. And we do apply a certain open data analysis. Uh, there are several models that do this, but basically it's like five stages that the most open is the one on CSV files. But uh, it is not done like that, and you could do it in, very, in various different ways. And then we produce a, a report among peers, like not only us, but also including uh, the government officers, finally uploading this to a third-party data portal. And this is really important because the third party gives a certain credibility and also a certain uh, yeah, credibility would be the, the word, like you will have the data in, in the hands of someone else, and so this worked also as a kind of peer control. Uh, so finally, what did we learn? This is really important. I mean, we, we haven't noticed yet how many governments have been using OpenStreetMap. I mean, not in a, in, in a systematic way. So what we learned a lot was 
how to dialogue with these people because usually they don't have the skills to understand. So it's really hard but also challenging to be transferring knowledge and trying to show what we do, but also learning from them how do they work and how do they do maps, because anyway, we are in the same world, you know? So that's one of our, our takeaways, and also the negotiation about to build partnership with governments is really important, so as to set a proper environment, so as to continue the collaboration. Uh, so basically, I wanted to show and also exchange and get the feedback from you about two different projects. Well, the first one, Crowded, was prepared by the StatCan, and this was a process that worked the other way around as I've been telling to you. I mean, uh, the National Statistics Office in Canada proposed by itself to use a method, although it was supported by certain uh, technological companies, but they proposed themselves by their own. They took the platform, the OpenStreetMap platform, and they produced an editor, and they tried to demonstrate that it is possible to run this kind of, of, um, of surveys, surveys on, on the ground, and that probably you could use the platform properly. We'll see that in detail just now. And the other one is the Stats Hub for Development Project. This is much more a project based on Latin America, and it refers to a certain uh, volunteered idea from uh, the uh, organization from United Nations that is called the Economic Commission for Latin America. They do have, let's say, a kind of network of all national statistic offices in the region, and they exchange experiences. So what we did is to take the same idea from the government side, but transparent to the civil society side, so that you could dialogue inside the country with some kind of civil society that may understand statistics, but could sit on the table with the government so as to negotiate and to build up needs based on census data and statistical data, of course, using cartography, cartographic uh, tools. You know? So the, the crowded is basically a two-year pilot. It's not ended yet. And they wanted to engage people using the mobile devices and, and having a, their own editor. And it's a lot of buildings that they, they, uh, they map. I, I don't have the data exactly, but I think it's around two million, um, uh, two million buildings. Huh? Uh, so with this mobile, sorry. Within mobile editor, what, what they did is to, to, to teach people actually how they could use it, but also it was a self-contained model that they could find on the web and that they could download data and take the data of their own neighborhoods, but also downtown or anywhere where, where that could be done. The idea was to show it to the public, but then that people could appropriate it and, and field data, like very few attributes were considered, but it was still worthwhile to take it into account. And they took the building footprints, the addresses, the kind of uses, basically all those three were. And finally, they run a quality assessment uh, exercise where they, they were asking really what a typical government would ask about that. Uh, because we really care about quality within the OpenStreetMap community, but we really don't know which of those quality assessments are the ones that third parties will be interested. In this case, these are the, the ones that interest the government, and these were completeness, completeness and coverage, also blueprint data, semantic accuracy, and um, uh, finally positional accuracy. Most of the data were around 80 and 90 percent, generally speaking, on the data that have been already surveyed, because there's still some time until the, the pilot will be ending. So basically, it was good news that the OpenStreetMap platform could be used in a government and also statistical environment. And that brings us, let's say, encourages us to do this in other, probably in other countries. I'm not saying that you can apply this kind of access to any country, probably those that 
don't have the uh, sufficient scale wouldn't apply, but probably those like similar to Canada with, with a federal constituency like in Argentina or Brazil or probably Colombia could use this kind of, of exercise as a, as, a, as a lesson and that could bring benefits for all parties at the same time. In fact, right now in Mexico, in Aguascalientes, there will be a meeting of all national statistic offices within this economic commission from the UN that will be meeting and speak about the next steps to run a census. So it's a great time to go there. So what we did is to find a proper location really close to the national statistic offices in, in Mexico. And we'll have our GEO OSM Awareness Week there so that well, the message is, hey, guys, from the official setting, uh, why don't you see what we do and then we can work together? So that's basically our strategy. And uh, finally, this is one minute. Okay. Finally, this is the stat for development project. It's basically to stable, establish a network of NGOs. We have already 50 organizations on board. Uh, people are mostly from Latin America and the Caribbean. Most of the participation are from South America. But we, we, we really trust we can collaborate with governments, with national statistic offices. And finally, we produce some recommendations within this network uh, about how to produce minimal viable products. Because you need to test them on the ground and you need governments to, to, to have the buyout of governments. Hmm? So that's it. I mean, really happy to be here. Thank you very much for all your attention. I hope we can also feedback afterwards. Could you talk about how you verify the data? I didn't, you sort of briefly, once it's captured by a group, what's your steps in place to? Well, yeah, basically we are guided by the rules that OpenStreetMap has about you know checking the data, but we also do have a structure like a pyramidal structure where you have a head of let's say area, and you will make cover between like 200 buildings or 400 buildings depending on the density of the area, and we do cross checkings and the peer reviewers are important. Most of the methodology is about five people involved. One of them will be like the general manager of, of the process, and two of them will be out of the surveying process so that they can gain some kind of objectivity about it. And two of them will be the surveyors, probably including the, the head of, of, of the group. Huh?